Welcome to Natural Habitat Adventures, Daily Dose of Nature. I'm your host, Sunny Vanderstar. Today's topic is in search of jaguars in Brazil's Pantanal, and it will be presented by our fabulous NatHab expedition leader, Elder Brandau. Elder, thank you so much for being here today. As I just said, it's so great to see you back on the schedule and see you in, in real life on the other end of that network somewhere in Brazil. Let's dive into this whole Pantanal subject. I love it. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here, your work and everyone uh, to attend to this um, short presentation. So yeah, welcome. I hope you um, will have uh, some information here and you have some fun as well with the pictures, right? So uh, my name is Zelder. Uh, the, uh, the goal of this webinar is to tell you a little bit about uh, the trip itself so you can be prepared for, for getting here, right? I'm talking from Brazil, so I'm quite close to the Pantanal and I hope you enjoy this. So the idea is to give you some um, information about uh, safety, packing, weather, you know, what you bring, the itinerary, um, the activities we might do there, the walks, uh, safari drives, and all the wildlife we might see there. And, and then in the end, some opportunities to experience the Jaguar uh, sightings and also the Jaguar pictures, you know, just some uh, ideas you, you have in mind and you can apply when you get there. Uh, yeah, so let's start. Um, well, just saying hi, uh, I'm from Brazil, I'm elder, um, I'm working in the Pantanal for almost 20 years and I'm a biologist as my background and so I was guiding for this time there, uh, capturing jaguars also, habituating them, um, working with conservation actually and as an environmental manager, uh, also guiding. So I was with full hands for, for a long time there. Um, I In uh, Pantanal, in Cuba, in the Amazon, but today I'm focusing on those two destinations, Pantanal and Patagonia. So, <clears throat> just uh, well, let's start to talk about uh, some important things. So, documents, what you should bring. Well, first, what is required, of course, is your passport. Just uh, reminding that you can bring a copy. You know, uh, it may be uh, uh, just a picture, so you can have a digital uh, copy of that. Uh, and a new thing this year, right? For Brazil, you really need a tourist visa, right? A visa. So um, uh, it's important to have. I bet you already had um, uh, your visa, but if you don't have it yet, it's quite easy. I have talked to many people this year. They are coming and they already got uh, quite fast, actually. So just remember to, uh, to bring it. Um, so, and some recommendations, right? So um, the itinerary, I would say, just bring uh, the itinerary printed and then your flights as well. Uh, it, it works uh, quite good if you have it. Uh, of course, the, your expedition leader will have all the information, but anyway, uh, you can bring with you. And also a copy of your travel um, insurance. It's also good, Ex same thing. Uh, the expedition leader will have all the information, but anyway, is always good to bring. So quite easy, the documents. So and now weather and what to pack, right? So um, in the Pantanal, you need, you need to be prepared. When you hear about the Pantanal, well, when you hear about Brazil, usually you think about just hot weather. And yes, you're right, but you will probably uh, experience some cold weather as well. You might, right? So um, almost all the time, is hot so you can expect between 80 and 100 fahrenheit sometimes even a little bit more than 100 so pretty hot uh, but in june and july you can experience quite cold weather for a few weeks so that can be 40 fahrenheit so fairly fairly uh, cold right um the night drives specifically uh, can be quite cold and the early boat rides uh, can be as well so definitely it's important to remember. Rain um, is gonna be the dry season. That have always go in the dry season in the Pantanal. So we don't really expect much rain, but anyway, you need to be prepared. Well, I'm going to mention the, the gear, but you know, just 
be in mind that uh, have in mind that you might experience some rain, um, especially in October. In the first week, second week of October, uh, is supposed to start the um, the rainy season. It's not that rains every day but anyway just to keep in mind so what you bring uh, concerning the weather what you bring uh, waterproof uh, day pack this is very important right uh, your net hat bottle don't forget um, your hat this is very important right especially for the boat rides um, we don't have any cover on the boats so it's very important to have your hat uh, which is really great do not having the the cover in the boat because you can actually experience the Pantanal in, in the best way so you can see everything around you so that's great um, useful also a neck gator right it's very hot uh, the Sun is quite quite strong so a neck gator helps really uh, for for the Sun and uh, actually for the code uh, to protect your ears and your nose um, and again sunblock right uh, very important to bring sunglasses um, bug repellent we will be in the dry season so not many bugs but anyway bring your uh, bug repellent because we might spend some time looking for uh, some wildlife maybe even seeing a jaguar close by um, in the riverbank and around five o'clock in the afternoon and then this is the sunset so then you might have some mosquitoes there and then that's useful um, so now about the weather itself I mean the down jacket do not forget your down jacket um, this is really important uh, and then a rain jacket um, always in your carry-ons bring with you your down jacket and rain jacket I always say that the rain jacket works as a windbreaker so it's quite good and and maybe if you want you can also bring a rain paint right so for the boat rides will be good we are in the middle of nowhere like two hours from from the lodge and then a sunny day and then suddenly we have some rain you can put your uh, rain paints after 10 15 minutes of rain and then you take it out and that's that's it um, let's see don't forget of course your binoculars uh, and your cameras right your camera gear I will talk more about uh, camera gear. Um, maybe if you are, if you're coming in July, you can bring some gloves and warm hat. Uh, that will be useful uh, probably in July. And hiking poles, I wouldn't say you really need. Um, just if you really need to to use as support for your balance. If you know you don't have a really good good balance because our walks are not really hikes I will mention that later but the terrain is quite flat so we're not going to get any altitude uh, anyway so just if you really need for some balance just bring one uh, and that's that's fine um, let's see I would say um, the collapsible ones it's much better the hiking poles and yeah, let's see if I forgot something. Well, shoes, right? Uh, a pair of hiking shoes, uh, waterproof, that's great. And then, and then a pair of comfortable shoes, that's important. And gear, um, the camera gear. So definitely long lens, it's really important in a wide angle um, because you might see beautiful landscapes as well. And sometimes I'll show you in some pictures, you might see the animals really up close. So uh, I would not recommend tripod, okay? Um, because on the safari drives we're going to do, there's no really much space for a tripod. Or on the boat rides, there it's actually you have the water motion there, and it's not really not really great. So maybe if you really need maybe a monopod, and that's that will be okay. Um, of course, bring your uh, waterproof pack for the camera. That's important. And what else to bring? Uh, the luggage tags for you, the passport, uh, maybe face masks. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. Of course, your medication, 
uh, some cash um, and what not to bring. This is important. <laughs> uh, not to bring jewelry. Uh, you don't really need that. And any heavy, heavy, heavy stuff, right? Um, yeah, I think I think that's it. So I like this picture actually because uh, it's one of my favorite things to 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 do in the pantheon. Also walk with a giant ant heater. Uh, but also it's important to talk about the physical requirements uh, because as I said, it's not really hiking what we are doing in the Pantanal. It's just a walk. Uh, it's beautiful. We can spend the whole morning walk, right? So up to four hours walk, but not really hiking. We're going slow, um, looking for animals, looking for wildlife. And uh, so it's not really a physical uh, thing. So it's just a flat terrain. So we're focused on flora and fauna. And uh, usually we have a few opportunities uh, of walk. First the lodge, we will be able to walk. And in the, sec in the, sorry, in the third lodge as well. Uh, but it's important to remember that we cannot walk too much actually. So because of a very great thing, we are spotting a lot of jaguars now. And then uh, the jaguars are walking right there sometimes in the lodge close to the i don't know swimming pool or to the restaurant and this is why we we need to keep uh our trip safe right so uh what else <clears throat> we can be in a forest right it can be also in the grassland we can be as i said like four hours walk maybe three hours walking but in a low uh a slow space uh, Pace, right um, what else uh, the terrain is uh, will be sandy so uh, maybe sometimes can be muddy uh, but not really much and not really to get wet we remember we're coming in the dry season right so let's see um, well just to change a little bit of subject this is just a picture to show Pantanal, right? So just to make an introduction, this is uh, one of the world's largest wetlands. And this picture just, uh, it's beautiful for me. I was uh, flying uh, quite low in this in this time. And this was the uh, wet season of the Pantanal. So it's quite, quite beautiful. Um, let's see. How about food? Uh, usually we have a very great opportunity to experience traditional local food. Um, so like fish, uh, paku fish, catfish, even piranha, you know, piranha soup. It's very typical from the Pantanal and you have a chance to, to, to do that, to taste that. Um, it's going to be a, always buffet, so you can, we can accommodate pretty easy the different dietary restrictions. And so like vegetarians, vegans, intolerance to something, you know, it's quite, quite easy to accommodate that uh, drinks water all along we will provide to you soft drinks and juices uh, are included as well and the snacks during the transfers the tour so it's pretty much great opportunity to experience food uh, <coughs> I'm sorry if I cough um, I'm just recovering from from some <clears throat> some of the food um, arrivals so You will fly to <clears throat> Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo has two airports, um, but you will probably get to Guarulhos, the biggest one. The GRU, what is mentioned there in the picture. <coughs> so once you arrive there, um, you're going to be welcomed by a host there. And so to bring you to the hotel. Right. So everyone will we're going to do that with every client arriving in Sao Paulo. And then the expedition leader will uh, meet you at the hotel uh, around six o'clock in the afternoon um, for a briefing and for the welcome dinner. So <clears throat> so just to tell you a little bit about the hotels, where we're going to stay, the lodges and then the activities. And then we go for the wildlife and we finish the, 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 um, the webinar. So, Sao Paulo, you arrive in Tivoli. 
Tivoli is a beautiful hotel. It's a great location in Paulista, quite close to Paulista Avenue at Jardim's neighborhood. Uh, so there's a lot of great options to walk around. Um, beautiful places like the, the Trianon Park. It's uh, You can walk like two minutes from the hotel. It's great. And there's a uh, Maspi, which is a museum, amazing place to, to visit as well. Um, this place has a rooftop, quite beautiful to have breakfast there. So amazing view there. Um, yeah, so this is where we're going to meet. Well, just to tell you a little bit about the electrical sockets in Brazil, this is the typical one. So you, this is, uh, you can find everywhere in Brazil. And then you can also sometimes bring uh, a universal adapter so you can uh, use there. Uh, the electrical current is 110, right? Uh, let's see, yeah, I think that's it. So just to tell you, uh, from Sao Paulo, we will start the trip and then we're going to fly to Cuiabá, where you can see in the picture there. Uh, later on, we're going to explore the Pantanal by land and by air. And then we're going to leave uh, Pantanal uh, from Campo Grande. So we're going to leave uh, the third lodge and then get to Campo Grande uh, and then fly to Sao Paulo. So just to, to give you uh, an overview. Um, what else? Um, Sao Paulo is in the time zone uh, one hour ahead of Eastern Daylight Time, right? So, uh, and Pantanal is the same as Eastern Daylight Time. Um, let's see. We're going to fly to Cuiabá, right? So arriving in Cuiabá, um, we'll meet the local guide. So you can see in the top uh, of the picture there, uh, the city. And we're going to drive to our first lodge. Uh, it's going to be two hours drive on a paved road and about two hours drive on a dirt road to get to the lodge one called Araras, right? So, uh, and depending the time we're going to arrive, we're going to uh, have lunch at Cuyabai in a nice place there. Uh, then, transportation. So, once we get there, we're going to drive in, in, in two vans and we're going to enter the dirt road and it's called Transpantaneira Road. So, this is where the fun stuff begins. <laughs> so, we can have a chance to see a lot of wildlife in the way in, right? Um, uh, it's a tough road, so it's a bumpy road. But anyway, it's the first time to find uh, caimans and capybaras and a lot of birds. So let's see. So first lodge, Aralas. Um, it's a nice place uh, run by a nice family. Uh, very simple lodge, but very cozy. So air conditioning, silly fans. Uh, hot water shower, you know, Wi-Fi. <clears throat> uh, there's no cell phone signal, uh, but there is Wi-Fi. Uh, cell phone signal we just have in São Paulo, Cuiabá City, and also in Campo Grande City. Uh, we're going to spend two nights there. And we're going to experience this lodge um, walking there uh, in the forest. We're going to be on safari drives and then night drives as well. So it's great uh, experience. And then I'll tell you a little bit more in detail the activities. Um, later on, as you can see in the map, Lodge 1, later on, we're going to drive to Porto Jofre, the second lodge. We're going to be there. So it's, again, the Transpantaneira Road, the dirt road. And we spend the whole morning driving to the second lodge. So um, I would say when you arrive to Cuiabá, right, the first and the second day, you'll be prepared with your backpack, binoculars and cameras handy, because you will, you will use that when you go into the first lodge, and then from the first to the second lodge, you're going to use uh, cameras and binoculars as well. Um, let's see, so then we arrive to Porto Jofre, which is uh, in, you know, uh, close to a river, so it's pretty nice, um, place. It's a simple lodge as well, uh, but this is the best place uh, to see the jaguars, right? The best place to find jaguars. Um, but it's not just about that. 
beautiful hyacinth macaws. We may see a lot of parrots and toucans uh, and the giant river otters. So this is why we go to this place. Great place to see the jaguars and the otters. Um, let's see. We're going to spend three nights there. And then um, after that, we're going to have a charter flight. And that is experience itself. You know, so from the second to the third lodge, we get a, a charter flight. So we get a one hour uh, flight there and you will have the chance to fly over the wetlands of the Pantanal and we're going to cross four different Pantanals. So later we can talk about that, but I mean, it's a great, great opportunity. Uh, so also bring your cameras on the airplane. Uh, so flying there and we arrive at uh, <clears throat> from Porto Jofre, the second lodge, to Cayman Lodge in the southern Pantanal. So it's a, a, a great place. So once we arrive there, uh, it's a quite amazing because we were going to arrive very close to our lodge already. So uh, inside the property, inside the, the Cayman Ranch, and as you can see in the picture, it's an amazing place because it's built on stilts right close to, to a lake and uh, it's a private lodge you just we are just ourselves there so it's quite quite amazing um so uh, let's see just some pictures of the rooms uh, beautiful uh, swimming pool there as well <clears throat> wi-fi in all the three lodges and i think now yeah i think now we're going to activities so um safari drives one of the best chances to to spot wildlife so this is one example of uh, the the vehicle we're going to use it um <clears throat> so we're also going to have walks especially on the grasslands like you can see this is the pink trumpet tree uh the symbol tree of the pantanal so it's uh, amazing to spot those those flowers all blooming in the pantanal in the dry season uh also in the grasslands but also inside the forest we're going to access different forests and one of the best chances to see primates, right? So to see howler monkeys and capuchins. Um, besides that, we're going to be exploring uh, by uh, speedboats, right? So we're going to be in the second lodge. Uh, we're going to focus on that. All the tours in the second lodge, we're going to use uh, speedboats, private speedboats. So, um, and a great chance to see a lot of our wildlife, including the jaguars. Let's see. <clears throat> so also to mention uh, the sunsets. I mean, this is the picture uh, of a sunset on the river. We were on, uh, on the boat. So, I mean, there's so many chances to, to get beautiful sunsets and <clears throat> Also here, uh, so just to give you some ideas about um, photography, so you can get great reflections as well, and especially in the rivers and sometimes in lakes and ponds. We we might have some some water, uh, depending uh, usually in the beginning of the season. <clears throat> but also we can get sunsets uh, on land. So this is uh, in the third lodge where you can see a lot of hyacinth macaws as well. This is where the hyacinth macaw project uh, is based at. So uh, it's a great opportunity to, to do that, to see the macaws getting, getting a great perspective, a great sunset as well. And let's see, and also night drives. So we're going to have the chance in the first lodge to go for one night drive and then uh, all the nights uh, in the third lodge. The second lodge we don't go because it's just focused on boats, right? So great opportunities also to see owls, uh, caimans and jaguars at night, uh, tapirs, especially tapirs, they walk more at night, uh, bats and raccoons. So there's a lot of uh, chances to, to see wildlife. Mm, let's see what else. Uh, so 
also talking now about wildlife for me Pantanal it's a world-class wildlife viewing destination so um, we might see um, in an average 10 days 10 days trip we might see 15 up to 20 species of mammals so and I'm talking about big mammals as well so it's um, it's quite nice uh, destination it is Mecca should be Mecca for bird watchers as well so <clears throat> is one of the most incredible places to see wildlife this picture shows a lot of uh, well a lot of caimans the Paraguayan caiman and uh, especially in the dry season sometimes we can see <coughs> a great concentration of caimans and when we arrive in Transpataneira Road, we have a first chance to see a lot of them. <clears throat> Besides uh, big concentrations of caimans, we might have chances to get uh, the reflection and the beautiful light. <clears throat> Usually we go out early in the morning to have a great opportunity to to see wildlife but also <clears throat> to get <clears throat> good photos sorry <clears throat> um, but also getting up close so in this picture uh, it was taken from you know with a with a cell phone just to <clears throat> just so you can realize and here you can actually see even the the dots in the jaw of the king right so those are band of nerves that allows them to sense they are very sensitive animals especially temperature and touch um, so this gives them an incredible um, way of feeling the environment so this is why they can be quite fast to catch even some fish in the water so a great opportunity to get really up close to caimans. <clears throat> of course, you cannot miss the capybaras, right? The world's largest rodent and chances to see them uh, from the boats, <clears throat> on the walks, also on safari drives. <clears throat> so that you cannot really miss. And especially in, uh, in dry season, we, we see a lot of babies. So uh, this is a picture just to illustrate that. Um, of course, the Brazilian tapir, it's uh, the, uh, one of the world's largest uh, um, of this, of this uh, group, right? And the Brazilian tapir, are also called lowland tapir, it's over 100, uh, 500 pounds. So pretty big, pretty big massive mammal usually we see them at night <clears throat> because they are quite sensitive to temperature which is Pantanal is usually quite hot this is why we usually see at night but then sometimes we can have this opportunity to take some pictures during daylight <clears throat> uh, also to mention some small little guys those are coatis south american kuwati and uh, one of the best places to see is the first lodge and when we go for a walk <clears throat> but also in the third lodge we have good chances to see them so <clears throat> just i just find that beautiful picture from a friend of mine uh, he's a professional photographer and very cool little tails uh, up there like bump cars right so just like this picture um, what else? The primates. So we might see capuchin monkeys, but uh, also uh, the howlers. The howlers are the bigger, the biggest ones. And this is a female, uh, beautiful female making the call, making the raw, and well, howling. Uh, and we have a great chance to see them in the first lodge and the second lodge as well. Uh, this picture was taken in, from the boat so in a beautiful in a beautiful tree and yeah we might have just we have chance to see three primates uh, the howler monkeys the capuchins and the marmoset black tail marmoset 
So tiny little guy, and we have just to see those two. Usually in the first lodge, um, just at northern Pantanal, the, the marmoset. Let's see. And of course, we cannot miss those guys, the giant river otters. Uh, They're huge, almost six feet long. And uh, the best chance to see them is on our boat excursions. Um, and the best thing for me is to see the behavior. I mean, the natural behavior of a giant river otter family, it's outstanding. And then the dry season also <clears throat> have opportunities to see the cubs um, and mating as well. So, I mean, it, it's a great chance to see and up close because when you go there, we go in, um, in places where they are habituated, right? So the jaguars, uh, the giant river otters, actually all the, the animals are habituated. Um, we're not going to talk about that, but this is a very important subject that the animals just feel uh, comfortable with the safari vehicles, with the boats, um, and they don't see us as a threat. So, and also they are not interested on us. So we are kind of a neutral, and this is why we, we can see all this wildlife there. And then we, of course, we can talk about the jaguars, right? So uh, the, maybe the most iconic uh, cat in the Americas. Um, and this picture I like to, to just to show because it makes, it just gives you a lot of details of the cat um, quite close. Sometimes uh, you can see a jaguar swimming in the river. So close to our boat, we try to, we always, respect the animal so we never block its way especially if it's in the water um, and then you can have a, a picture like that even you uh, respecting the animal so uh, you got the eyelashes there you got the reflection in the water um, and the expedition leader will always try to provide you the best angle um, the best <clears throat> light <clears throat> and sorry is them <clears throat> emotion to get close to a jungle <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> also, <clears throat> this picture <clears throat> gives you a uh, issue. <clears throat> <clears throat> Give me one minute. <clears throat> So this picture gives you an opportunity to see jaguars on trees. Um, so on the second lodge, uh, we're going to explore by boat and is the best place to see them exploring the trees. So imagine to see a family just hanging out, <clears throat> comfortable, close to the, to the boat, the mother and two, well, full grown up cubs. So <coughs> really great to, to experience that. Um, also, the, you're going to see that the drivers, the local guides, they are also really experienced on <coughs> putting you in the right place on the right time. So we, we make a team there trying to work with that and to find the best spot, uh, respecting the, the animal getting in a safe distance. So we always try to do our best uh, for that. <clears throat> also, you might have <clears throat> a chance to get a really close, close up, a really close experience. So this is also a, a, quite, a quite close experience there. We were in a boat 
like uh, we were probably <clears throat> just uh, 20 feet away from it. And so it was amazing, um, beautiful uh, animal tree spot. As you can see, there, there are two jaguars there uh, and, and they are comfortable. They're just laying down one, uh, actually two brothers. Yeah. And also we'll be able to, um, to um, illustrate or to show you, to tell you <coughs> the relationship that they have. So who is mother of who, who is the father, who is the, who are our brothers and sisters? We know each individual, most of the individuals, and we can identify them as well. So it's quite fun, quite nice to, to see if we can spot again the same cat and, and so on. <clears throat> this is a picture that I like uh, very much because it's just right there in, uh, in the best hour, the golden hour of the day. This was uh, close to sunset and we were just waiting um, for the animal, actually following the animal for probably around 30 minutes and he was just uh, actually her, she, it's a female, she was just walking at the riverbank and uh, enjoying going in the water uh, and eventually hunting. So she was looking for some capybaras and caimans. And, uh, but then we were just waiting for the right moment. And then the light came, she just came to this very beautiful um, river bank and we got a nice, nice uh, background as well. So just to give you some ideas of um, where, where you're going to be at, how close, which kind of a uh, terrain is going to be. For example, this picture was taken from a boat and <clears throat> we'll be also doing a safari drive and a walk. So also chances to see jaguars there. <clears throat> also, we're sometimes we can manage to put the jaguar just facing uh, our way, you know, coming towards us. So this picture was uh, quite interesting as well because it was just following uh, a riverbank and then we were managing just to wait uh, in him to come, right? So this was a male. It's a quite interesting picture as well because as you can see, um, some saliva, it's coming down from his mouth. Um, a nice picture, we can talk about this later, but it, it's a male uh, establishing the territory. And minutes before he was uh, roaring and this actually starts a lot of uh, chemical reactions in the body of the jaguar and this is one of the results when the he starts to <coughs> to produce a lot of saliva and, and and yeah and then you can we can even get to see that on the picture so just some examples of what you get and yes, uh, this is one of my favorite pictures because it was, I think, was my favorite picture of a jaguar uh, 15 years ago, probably. And it, so at night, you also can get pictures of the jaguars. And so with the right light, uh, we, can, uh, we, can, we can do this with the right camera and that's it. Uh, and specifically, this one was uh, indirect light. We can play with the light, try to 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 get a, a better perspective. So uh, we can do that as well. And just to also say that we we get this picture, put the light on the face of the animal, just a few seconds. Usually we we set the light on the body so we don't disturb too much the animal, and then just a few seconds on the head, and then move away the light. We always try to be uh, respectful to the animal, to show a lot of respect and not to interfere uh, in the natural behavior as well. <clears throat> this is another uh, picture, another uh, example of a, a night picture and an interaction between, you know, among jaguars. So uh, this was quite far actually. And even though we are far at night, we can actually get some some pictures uh, of those guys um, and of course uh, just moving on to other uh, animals um, the giant eaters you cannot miss that 
this is one of my my favorite things to do and and this picture is quite interesting because it's a mom with a baby in her back um, and it's a great opportunity as well we we could see in the first lodge but definitely we have great chance to see in the southern Pantanal, so the third lodge, um, we, we see the giant uh, and also the lesser, or also called colored and eater. Um, amazing animal as well. And uh, yeah, we're going to have chance to see during the day and at night. <clears throat> and of course, now talking about birds, um, the high sin macaws are just a the symbol of uh, of uh, of Brazil of Pantanal. I mean, the high sin macaws are just amazing, and we we can see everywhere we go in the first, in the second, and the third lodge. <coughs> but especially uh, in the third lodge, uh, we see a big concentration of them uh, because the high sin macaw institute is based there, and. Uh, and you can get pictures and you know getting uh, drinking water on the ground on the nest um, June to to October. Uh, this is the months that Nedhab goes to the Pantanal uh, is the breeding season, right? So we might see uh, chicks. So it's an amazing opportunity. And <clears throat> also ocelots. Um, so another species of cat. Uh, the best place to find the ocelots is the third lodge, <clears throat> and usually at night. Of course, the symbol bird of Pantanal, the Jaburu stork. <coughs> this is my favorite bird, uh, crested or a pendula. They have an incredible sound, so this is why I just put it here. to Just to illustrate a few birds, this is their nest. <clears throat> they are, belong to the weaver bird family. Uh, Girakuku, a very common common species uh, in the Pantanal, but it's a funny shape, funny sound. Uh, it's an amazing bird. Uh, Rufus tail jacamar is one of the most beautiful ones. Also, a, a small little guy that looks like a hummingbird, but it's not. Um, but just some pictures that we can get pretty close to it. Uh, hum a hummingbird, a real hummingbird now, a gilded hummingbird. Uh, so a close-up view, so we can uh, actually get a, a lot of uh, chances to to get uh, bird pictures. And of course, I didn't show much. I didn't show any actually of the flora, but we have so many, so many spe uh, species there, and we're going to experience all of them. Um, I just put it here uh, the water lily, the royal water lily that we might see in the second lodge um, in Cuyaba River there. So uh, just to illustrate that we have flora, but we cannot, we don't have too much time to talk about that now. <clears throat> I think uh, this was the idea. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope it was useful so you could prepare a little bit better for the trip, uh, for the NADHAP trip in the Pantanal. And I hope you enjoy the, the pictures. So thank you again, and I think we'll be open for a uh, question. Elder, thank you so much. We've got lots of questions, so we'll dive right in here. Um, here's a good one. If there is an encounter between crocodile and a jaguar, what happens? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't put any picture there. Uh, I don't want to spoil, but because <clears throat> sometimes, yes, uh, not every time, of course, but we have some chance to see jaguar hunts. So, and yeah, definitely the caimans do have, do not have any chances <laughs> against the jaguar. Um, they can fight, but the jaguars are really, really powerful. Um, usually if you see a, a tiger or a leopard, um, or even a lion also killing the, the prey, they go to the throat. And most times they suffocate the animal and then start to eat. The jaguars, they can do that, but um, they have the strongest bite um, among all the cats and they usually, they go behind the neck. So it's a fast killing, well, kind of, 
fast killing. And they usually they try, uh, especially big males, they just break the, the spine and then the animal stop moving at all. So no, the, the caimans do have, they do not have any chances against the jaguar. So, and then we can have a chance to see jaguars go into the water, trying to hunt them. Uh, or even in the third lodge, we might see uh, jaguar hunting capybara or caimans. Amazing. Um, how does the cooler weather in June and July affect mm. the various animal sightings? Hmm. Uh, when it's too cool, too, uh, too much, um, like 40 degrees, this is quite rare, but it already happened. Uh, yes, during the first time in the morning, it, it, it takes a while for the animals to go out. So usually, if it's too cold, we go a little bit later. So, for example, we would go out for a safari drive in the morning, like uh, 7, 7.30, uh, if it's too cold. If it's hot, we go a little bit earlier than that. For example, in the, safari, in the boat rides, we could go like 5.30, right? Um, but then in July, it's too cold. And then we, we, we tend to, to go out a little bit later. Um, but then around 8, 30, 9 o'clock is already, uh, it's already warming up and then the animals, uh, starts to go out. So no, I, I would not say that the cold weather, it's a barrier. It's, uh, for, for wildlife beauty, not really. Okay. Um, can you recommend a bird book for this trip? Uh, Princeton, I think uh, Princeton is really good, but also uh, a Brazilian one. <laughs> so um, I think Birds of Pantanal. Yeah, I think this is the name, Birds of Pantanal. I'm sorry, I don't have right now, but I can uh, I can send you the picture and any details for someone that wants. I just send by email. Uh, just send a hi to me and I can definitely I can write it down. Okay, great. Um, can you talk a little bit about the size of the group and if one naturalist accompanies guests on the entire trip or how that's broken down between expedition leaders and local guides? We, we are always in 10, 10 people, right? Uh, in the Nadahab trip to the Pantanal. And we are always with one expedition leader. So, for example, me, I'm going to be there with 10 people. And then we're always going to have a local guide, always. So uh, the local guide can be the driver or we can have a local guide and the driver. So it, you're going to understand uh, when you arrive there, but always is like that. We always work as a group. We always try to go uh, all together. Uh, on the safari, of course, on the safari drive, of course, in the boat drive, but even in the walk, we try to stay as a group because we can, we go slow, we share, we, we can stop so everybody can actually hear and see something. Um, so we are always managing that. But sometimes uh, we can, uh, on a walk, the local guide can be with uh, four or five people. I can be with four or five people just to different talks. Uh, this is how we manage, but always trying to get as, as a, you know, as a one thing. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, the photography lenses you'd recommend? Um, one of our viewers asks if a 70 to 200 is okay, or if they should bring a longer lens, like a 180 to 600. Yeah, um, I usually use uh, 400 and <clears throat> 100 to 400, uh, but definitely you can bring a, a longer one. We will always have the support of the safari vehicle and always have the support of the boat and plenty of space in both of them. So you can actually, you know, put quite comfortable your, your heavy lens there. Um, and use whatever you want. 
uh, in the walks, you, you might be uncomfortable while at 600 uh, millimeters, but uh, you can, even though you can bring it, um, you usually we go for two hours or four hours walk, just so you can have in mind, sort of. Um, anyway, we will have all this space for the gear, so you can you can have that as well. Excellent, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, when you go out for walks, how do you protect the visitors? Do guides carry weapons or flares, mm -hmm. or how do how do you keep everybody safe? Uh huh. Not really. We don't really use uh, any guns. Uh, you're going to see. Pantanal is a paradise. Uh, I'm joking, but 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 in in one perspective, it's true. Um, it doesn't really have uh, yellow fever. It doesn't have really it doesn't have uh, malaria or dengue in the Pantanal. And also the animals itself, they, they are not really a threat to us. Even a big animal like a jaguar. Uh, they don't see us as a threat. They don't see us as a prey as well. And for <clears throat> at least 30 years, uh, tourism is happening in the Pantanal. So it's pretty safe. Of course, we do not walk at night uh, because the jaguars are there and you might encounter one at night so you don't see him um and sometimes can be with a cub or maybe it killed um a small prey close to the lodge and then that could be a dangerous situation but besides that and maybe mating when their jaguars are mating that can be a little bit more aggressive towards animals and towards uh humans but it's really, really rare. So the animals don't really see us as a threat. We do not need to carry any weapons with us. Um, we just, we are very safe. And if we encounter a jaguar walking, we're going to enjoy. First, we're going to enjoy uh, the sighting. And then keep in mind all the clients and what the animal is doing. So the behavior, the natural behavior of the animal. Usually, the jaguars will look at us and move away. Um, but anyway, we're going to keep our, we're going to hold our ground if it comes close to us. And then, as you heard anywhere else in the world, uh, you make yourself bigger, you make uh, noises, uh, and you keep distance. You keep going backwards, never uh, showing the back up to the animal, uh, always looking to the animal. And that's it. So we, it's a pretty, pretty safe uh, place. Maybe just to finish this, this subject, um, one animal that can be aggressive is the peccary. But even though um, it's not really uh, a, a problem, it's just uh, he can be aggressive if you corner them, if you avoid um, the animal to cross a place which we never do this. So it's really, really, really safe. Excellent. Thank you for clarifying all of that. Um, are there weight restrictions on luggage? Not really. Um, there, there is because the international flights, of course, which is uh, 23 pounds, uh, uh, sorry, 23 kilos, that would be uh, uh, 35 pounds, a little bit more. <clears throat> um, um, and we're going to get the charter flights from uh, from the second lodge, the third lodge, <clears throat> but we're going to use big airplanes, so not really, really <clears throat> luggage limit. <clears throat> and then we're going to add a new thing this uh, this season. We're going to fly also from the third lodge to Campo Grande City. And, and that is different airplanes. So not as much space as we have um, in, in the previous flight. So if you are thinking about luggage, you can bring a regular suitcase, 
but bring a little bit smaller uh, just to, to get that in mind, the second charter flight, and, or soft side as well. Even a duffel bag is not requ required, but you know, just to, just to keep in mind. Um, but I think the weight uh, is not is not really a problem. It's like a, a regular international uh, regular flight. Okay. <clears throat> I think we have time for one more question. Um, there are a couple folks who are curious about snakes that they might see on this trip and <laughs> how you might navigate those on the trails. Yes, it's so many subjects, right? It's so many <laughs> wildlife. I couldn't, I, I had to pick some pictures. Um, yes, we might see some snakes. It's not so common, but we are in dry season and we might see. <clears throat> we might see anacondas, so yellow anaconda. <clears throat> and especially on the river, in the river bank, sometimes we find <clears throat> it's not rare but it's not so common. <clears throat> so it's, a, it's a, some chance to see them. Uh, but then we have so many others. Rattlesnake, Ferdolens, uh, the Coral Snake. Uh, there are so many and others that are not poison. Uh, so yeah, we have also the, the red tail boa, which is yeah, much harder to see than the anaconda. But but they are there so and vine snakes as well so there's many species we uh, yeah uh, we just don't see many uh, but uh, eventually we might see <coughs> excellent <clears throat> well that is the last question we have time for today so i will hand it back to you for closing comments well, thank you very much. I I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was useful. And I see you there in the Pantanal. I hope I can be your guide. If I'm not, you're going to be with outstanding expedition leader there. There are all my friends. And I hope you have a great time in the Pantanal. It's my second home. So I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> thank you again, Elder. It sounds like such an incredible trip. I do hope to join you one day. Thank you for suffering through. I hope you get some rest for your voice and, and some water and, and feel better very soon. Um, I want to thank everybody who tuned in. Please join us again tomorrow for our next Daily Dose of Nature. You can check out this week's lineup, including registration links, on our website at nathab.com forward slash webinars. We did record today's presentation, and we will have the replay available on our website soon. With that, I'll conclude the webinar. Have a wonderful day, everyone.